Okay, so uh, let's restart the class. So I had a couple of questions at the break time. One question was, why does Switzerland have a negative number here? Uh, negative yield on their government bonds, negative interest rates. It means that you have to pay Switzerland money to have their bonds, rather than them paying you money. Okay? So I was asked, do they have a negative default spread? But we can't have a negative default spread. The reason that that is negative is because inflation is negative in Switzerland. Okay? Currently in Switzerland, we have a negative. Switzerland inflation rate is zero, minus 0 0.9. It's in deflation. It's an unusual situation. Not many countries are in deflation, right? So if we are going to calculate their risk-free rate, which is inflation plus the real interest rate, it's going to be mi inflation minus 0 0.09 plus the real interest rate, 0 0.5, right? Equals minus 0 0.4. Plus default spread for Switzerland is zero, right? So other things affect bond prices too. Like Switzerland is a safe haven. Currently there is some problem with Greece. So people are a li little bit concerned about investing in, in uh, riskier countries. Switzerland is kind of like a safe haven. During the war, World War I and World War II, a lot of people put their money in Switzerland, right? So bonds is also, the price of bonds is also affected by supply and demand, apart from these things, okay? And safe haven is one of the supply and demand areas. But just it's unusual that Switzerland has a negative uh, inflation, deflation. Another question is, where can I get percentages about uh, debt to equity ratio? If we go to Yahoo Finance, key statistics here, we can find uh, debt to equity ratio. Okay? So under here we can have balance sheet, debt to equity ratio. Okay? This is from the balance sheet. We can also find information here on Disney's uh, <coughs> Uh, balance sheet, right? We can find information about debt on their balance sheet. This is book value, okay? And information about their equity on their balance sheet. And we can find daily information about their market capitalization here. Market capitalization is basically number of stock multiplied by price of stock. So just in the next class, we'll talk more about your project, right? And we'll talk about how I'll give you some more specific instruction about how to calculate the cost of capital for your company. So one of the ideas of that project is to review all of this part of the course about the hurdle rate, okay? It's a practical way to review. You need to find a cost of equity. You need to decide, am I going to use implied premium or historical premium, okay? Uh, for making my cost of equity, okay? Then you need to find your cost of debt, make a weighted average and tell me cost of capital, okay? So this is, project is going to be a practical exercise to review, okay? Does anybody have qu any extra question about this hurdle rate before we move on to return? If you have any question, you can ask me because it uh, also can help other students. Sometimes the other students also have the same question. Okay. Then uh, just check your name. Okay. There are some students missing today. I guess it's Labor Day, so some students <laughs> wanted to be with their father or mother who had a day off, right? They, maybe they wanted to go to the park together, something like that, with their parents. Next week is Children's Day, too, Tuesday. 
So then let's uh, talk about measuring return. So measuring return, we want to look at the magnitude, means how big, the timings, when, of what? Of cash flows, as well as other side effects. What is a cash flow? What does cash flow mean? Okay, money is moving, right? Cash flows, money moving out or money moving in? Do you understand flow? What else flows? What can flow normally? Water flows or some liquid flows, right? It moves around. So, we are going to guess how much money is going to be going in or going out, right? When? In year one, in year two, for a company. So we're going to be using our net present value here, it's going to be important, okay? Uh, any business has to guess about their income for the future. So I want to set up a business, a restaurant, for five years, okay? So I have in my investment now, $100,000, okay? I'm going to lease the restaurant. How much money am I going to make in the first year? Will I make a profit in the first year? No. Year one? Maybe it's going to be minus 50,000. Year two, am I going to make a profit in year two? No. Maybe not, maybe minus 10,000, getting a bit better. Year three, am I going to make a profit? Yes, how much? 50,000. Okay, year four. Am I going to make a profit? Yes. How much? <coughs> More than last year, how much? 70,000. Year five. 90,000. Should I open my restaurant? Or not? Yes. Looks like I should, but what do we need to do to be sure? What do we need to do to be sure? What, what is 90,000 in five years? What, can I say what that is worth today? What do I need to do? I need to find the present value of all of these cash flows. Okay, and I need to compare them to my investment. Was it worth it to invest this money or not? Okay? So what, do I, what other information do I need to know to know the present value? I need to know a discount rate. My discount rate or interest rate is going to be my company's cost of capital. Okay, that's why we calculated the cost of capital. I want to know how much does it cost me to get that money. So let's say I go to the bank and they tell me my cost of capital is 10%. Okay? Now, can you, you know how to do the present value. Can, now, I want you to do the calculation. Tell me, should I open my restaurant or not? This is my cost of capital, 10% or interest rate or discount rate. Okay? This is my profit or loss in each year. Okay? So, I want you to find present value of year one. Find the present value. So you need to find five present values, simple present values. Do you know the equation for simple present value? So look back at your uh, time value of money, find the equation for a simple present value and calculate the present value for each of these five years. You can do it with your partner. So your partner can calculate one and two and three and you can do four and five. Okay, and then add them together. Tell me, is it more than 100,000 or less than 100,000? Okay? <coughs> do you understand what you have to do? Find the present value for each year of the cash flow. Okay? And then, is the present value positive or negative? then I can decide whether I, I should invest the money or not.
Yes. Your z time, time zero is going to be minus 100. So we want to find out time zero is minus 100. Okay? So we want to be able to compare this number to time zero. Okay? This number to time zero. This number to time zero. This number to time zero. So add them all together and compare them to time zero. Okay? So we need to find the value of each number for time zero and add them together. <laughs> Zero. I make the investment. Okay. So what? What's the first? What's the answer for the first year? This is the present value would be minus forty-five thousand. And what? Okay. Does that look right? About 10% of 50,000 is 5,000, so minus 5,000, it's got to be 5,000 less, right? So that looks about right. Okay, what about year two? Minus 8,000. 264. What about year three? Okay, what about year four? <laughs> okay, what about year five? Okay, what's the total? If we add or subtract these numbers together, right? We can just make them just make them even numbers. Okay, minus forty-five thousand, minus eight thousand, thirty-eight thousand. Uh, 48,000 and 56,000. If we add these numbers together, what do we get? <coughs> 89,000. Okay, now should I make the investment or not? The value of this all of these numbers, my in, this is my out, outgoing money. I invested 100,000. I'm not going to get that back. Let's just imagine that I just have a lease for five years, everything is finished after five years. Okay? I'm moving to another country, just to make it easier. Okay? This is my incoming money. In today's value, it's 80, 89,000 in today's value. Should I start the restaurant or not? No, right? I invest this much money, I get back this much money in today's value. Okay? So it's not going to be a good investment for me at a 10% interest rate. What would happen if I change the interest rate to 5%? If I change the interest rate to 5%, do you think I should do the project or not do the project? Probably do the project, right? If the, if the cost of capital is lower, 5%. For example, I got a loan to get this money, right, at 10%. But if the interest rate was lower, 5%, then yes, it could be worth it. My interest payments would be less every year, and my profit would be higher. Okay, can you understand that idea? So this is what we're doing with return. We're calculating the cash flows. How big is the cash flow? When is the cash flow? We're finding the present value of the cash flow. 90,000 in year five is worth 55,000 in today's money. We already studied about the time value of money. There's inflation, there's risk, right? There's the real interest rate. So this money is not worth as much, okay? Anyway, it cost us 10% to get a loan. So we add them all together, we only get 89,000, it's less than 100,000. Don't take the project, okay? So this is just a simple way, but let's look at it in more detail. So we have uh, earnings against cash flows. So we have different ways we can present things. 
One of them is using intangible earnings, the other one is using cash. So cash and accounting way are a little bit different. One way of doing that is depreciation. This way we did in cash. But with accounting they can, instead of year zero, 100,000, they're going to say, put this money over different years. Okay, as depreciation. Say I bought a car for 100,000. Year one, cash has gone out in year one. I paid 100,000 for the car. But if we use depreciation, it will be deducted every year. So that's just one example. So in accounting, we show revenues when products and services are sold or provided, not when they are paid for. Another example is, I got this cash in this year, but in accounting, I sold more products in this year. I just didn't get paid for them yet, okay? In the accounting way, it will be included in this year. In the cash way, it will be included in the next year because I didn't get the cash till the next year, right? But accounting, they have accounts are receivable. So accounting show the revenue when the goods are sold, not when we get the cash, okay? And show the expenses as well, like accounts payable, rather than cash expenses. We have operating against capital expenditures. So uh, this is like depreciation. Or another example is research and development. We could put here research and development. We paid $1 million for R&D in this year. But that's cash. But under accounting, they're going to put R&D year one, 20,000, year 2, 20,000, year 3, 20,000, year 4, 20,000, and year 5, 20,000. So the accounting way is a little bit different than cash. These are the main differences, right? Uh, to get from accounting earnings to cash flows, we have to add back uh, non-cash expenses like depreciation. So we, we can look at the accounting way and change it to the cash flow by doing these things. Adding back in depreciation. So for example, for R&D, here in the accounts, we had minus 20,000. What are we going to do? Add, add in 20,000. So minus 20,000 plus 20,000 is zero. Makes it cash, okay? Uh, subtract out the cash outflows, which are not expensed. So the other way around. And make uh, other revenues and expenses into cash revenues exp expenses by looking at uh, working capital. So we're going to talk about each of these in more detail. So the first question is to discuss with your partner. When we are measuring the return on an investment, do you think we should use cash flows or should we use accounting earnings, accounting way? So when we are measuring the returns, should we do this in cash? Or should we do this with including depreciation here, right? And making accounts receivable in each year, including the accounts receivable. With cash, we don't include accounts receivable or accounts payable. So discuss with your partner. What do you think is better for measuring our return? Using cash flows or using the accounting way? What do you think? Okay, let's have a show of hands. Who thinks we should use the cash flow? Hands up. Cash flow. Who thinks we should use accounting earnings? Hands up. Okay. So, uh, we're going to use cash flows. Okay. We can't spend earnings. And we're going to use incremental cash flows and time-weighted returns. 
So basically, cash is a little bit more accurate than accounting. One of the reasons we have accounting is to, for tax purposes. If we include, the, if we just made our accounting like this, the first year we would have lost this, we would have paid no tax, right? The next year we would have lost this, we would have paid no tax. The next year we would have paid a lot of tax on these earnings. So for accounting, we use depreciation. One of the reasons is, instead of putting this money here, the first year we're going to have minus 20, minus 20, minus 20, minus 20. So the first year minus 20, still pay no tax. Next year minus 20, still pay no tax. Okay? But this year, 38 minus 20, we pay less tax. This year, 48 minus 20 is going to be 28, we're going to pay less tax. 56 minus 20 will be 36, we'll pay less tax. Okay? So using the accounting earning, we take this money and we put it in every year for tax purposes. Right? Do you understand? We're going to talk about more later, okay? Depreciation for tax purposes. But when we're looking at returns, it's better to use the cash. Use the cash to value, okay? So, uh, <coughs> we're going to discuss about each of these, but this is the sentence we should know. Time-weighted, incremental cash flows. That's how we're going to measure our return. So, uh, first of all, what is a project or what is an investment? So we can have many different types of investments or projects, big or small, anything, okay? It could be a major strategic decision to enter a new area of business or a new market. So Disney is deciding to set up a theme park in Rio de Janeiro or in Brazil. That's a very big project, right? We could start our company in a new business, completely new business. Disney could start making cars. That's a project. We acquire another company. That's a project. Uh, decide to do something in our existing business. Disney decides to launch a new toy. Okay, make a new toy. That's a uh, project. Just changing the way we're doing a current project. That's also an investment. Delivering a service. <coughs> Almost every choice made by a company can be decide, looked at as an investment. So that's why one reason why financial management is important, right? Almost every decision you make in the company could be an investment, right? We're going to make a new product. We're going to promote this product more and this product less. Okay? They can all be looked at as an investment. So here are some examples of investments we are going to look at. First one is Rio Disney. Okay, we are going to decide should Disney invest in a new theme park in South America. Okay, we need to consider other things like in Brazil we have country risk, including the currency. The Brazilian currency is not very stable. The next company is Aracruz, a paper company. So they are deciding to make a new plant. Do you understand plant? Yes. What's another word for plant in factory. factory, right? We're not talking about the flower plant, right? We're talking about factory plant. A little bit different. Bookscape. We're going to talk about making an online store. These days we can see bookstores closing down. Old bookstores, right? A lot of people are buying their books online. Do you buy your books online or do you go to the bookstore? Right. Every book? Online? Never go to the store anymore? Yes. Yes. Mm. yes me too. <laughs> now I have an Amazon Kindle. Could be even worse news for the bookstore, right? Do you know Amazon Kindle? It's a good way to practice English. If you spend $100, you can buy an Amazon Kindle. They have to import from the US. But you can get something like uh, half a million books for free on this device. The free books are usually old ones, like the copyright is finished from 70 years ago, or 50 years, more than 50 years ago, right? But you can get a lot of interesting books. Uh, for example, the textbook for this course I can have on the Amazon Kindle, right? In Korea you have the Crema e-reader. Do you have a Crema? 
My wife has a Kramer e-reader for Korean language, right? But if you want to practice your English, I recommend asking your parents for $100. For a good, it's a good cause, right? They can pay with their credit card so they can see they're buying you a reader, right? Tell them, Mommy, I want to practice English. <laughs> I want to practice my English. You want to have a say? Okay. Then, if you keep using that voice and keep telling your mother every day or your father, then probably they'll do that. I heard in Korea some girls give their father some massage, shoulder massage. Is that true? Do you give your father shoulder massage? No. <laughs> Uh, maybe it's in the old days, but nobody gives their father any massage on his arm or his shoulders. You're not going to admit it in front of the other students. You can give your father some massage when he comes back from work and say, Daddy, I want Amazon Kindle. It's good for my education. My teacher told me I can practice my English. Why? Then you can also buy the books more cheaply on the Amazon webpage. It's very convenient. I use it here. Okay? Are you going to do that? Give your father a massage? We have books. Shoulder massage? It's Korean, kind of Korean culture from before. <laughs> Is it true or am I making it up? It's true, right? So the next one is uh, acquiring uh, Tata Chemicals. He's going to acquire a company. So we're going to look at acquisition as an investment. So this is a kind of definition of a project. Usually a project has a large upfront cost. Here we had a large upfront cost for starting a restaurant, right? Paying for the lease for five years, buying some chairs and tables, okay? Cash flows for a specific time period, money is coming in, and usually we have a salvage value. We didn't include here, but at the end we usually have a salvage value. Do you understand salvage? No. Salvage is uh, when a ship sinks in the ocean. We pull up the ship, there might be something on the ship like gold coins or something, that's called salvage. Okay. So salvage value means that we sell our things at the end, we get something back. So I said, I'm going to run my restaurant for five years in Korea, then I'm going to move to another country. So we didn't include here, but we could have included. At the end, I had a lease, so I can't sell the building. But what can I sell? What can I sell at the end of five years? From my restaurant. What do you think, when I'm closing down my restaurant, what can I sell? Get some money back. Tables. Chairs, some equipment, maybe I had a kitchen, cooker, right? Equipment. So if I sell those things, we could add in here salvage value. Okay, salvage value, 10,000. Okay, and what's the present value? Not much. It's not going to make any difference. Okay? So we have, this is a salvage value at the end of the project. <clears throat> so, uh, let's... Look, I think we talked about earnings against cash flows at the start, but easier way to understand is by looking at an example. So we're going to use uh, Disney's theme park to talk about earnings and cash flows. So the theme park is going to be built near Rio, modeled on Europe Disney in Paris and Disney World in Orlando. Have you ever been to Euro Disney or Disney World? You have? Which one? The uh, US. The US. What was it like? Uh, you mean park? Yes. Magic Kingdom? Anything. <laughs> was it good? Yeah, good. Which is better? Uh, Latte World? <laughs> <laughs> or uh, Everland? Or... Disney World. Disney World. Disney World, is it much better? Yes. Why? Uh, it was big. Um, much bigger? 
Do you think? Do you want Disney to make a Disney World in in Korea or China or Japan? Do you want Disney to make a Disney World in Korea? Yes. Yes. No. no. Say no. Well, I guess it's much more expensive than Everland or Lotte World. I guess, right? I went to Disney World in Orlando, but just when I was a kid, one year old. Nowadays, I don't remember anything. Right? My parents just wasted the money. Right? Just babies. Right? But nowadays, they went, they go to Euro Disney because there's one in Europe. It used to be there before. Okay. So. Uh, <laughs> they're going to include, like in Orlando, Magic Kingdom, okay, and then they'll make another theme park, and so on, okay. We're going to estimate their earnings and cash flows in US dollars. So the first thing we have to look at is the cost of construction. It's going to cost $3 billion. That's quite expensive. Uh, two billion right now, two billion in year zero, one billion after year one. Disney has already spent half a billion euros, 500 million euro bit, or dollars, researching the proposal and getting the necessary licenses. Especially for construction projects, we have to spend money before. We have to get planning permission. Do you understand planning permission? Planning permission? means we have to get permission to build. Usually the residents, people who live around there, are usually don't want to have a theme park because of traffic or a lot of people, pollution, other problems. Okay? So we have to get permission. We have to make the plan and so on. Uh, none of this is, can be recovered if the park is not built. So the cost of constructing the second part of the park will be 1.5 billion. 1 billion at the end of the second year, and 500 million at the end of the third year. Then we make some revenue assumptions. We look, how much money are we going to get? Just like we made here for the restaurant. For Disney, we're going to say, how much money are we going to get each year? Okay. So Magic Kingdom will make this much problem. This thing starts after three years, we'll make this much. Resort properties, we'll make this much. So, what we can notice is that uh, the money is going up, right? Every year we're making more money. We're getting more customers, we're making more money. So it's a normal thing for a business. The revenues increase. Revenue increases as the time goes by. Then we need to add in our costs, expenses. So, how did we, where did we get these numbers from? Where did we get these numbers from of revenues? Did we just make them up in our head? I think we'll get that much money. Where do you think Disney gets this estimate or guess of their revenue from? What could they use? What could they use to give them a good guess? They already built a, a Disney World in Europe, in France. Do you think they could use that to help them? Yes or no? Yes. Make a good guess. Yes, right? So they could look at France. What was the business like in the Euro Disney in France? What were our revenues like the first year, the second year, the third year? Okay? They could look at other theme parks in Brazil. Like if there was a Lotte World or every land in Brazil. After they started up, how much revenues did they get? Okay. So, is this going to be the truth? Is Disney going to get exactly this much revenues? No. No, they're not. This is their best guess. They have to try and make their best guess. Okay. About their return. So they make their best guess by looking at the past, the other, uh, other theme parks and their own theme park. The same for expenses. Their expenses are 60% of the revenues, usually, in the park. So they look at France and they say, we get this much revenue, we have this much cost, salaries. What kind of expenses do we have? 
in a theme park. What kind of expenses does Lotte World have? What do you think are the expenses for Lotte World? Security. Security. Staff. Staff. Other expenses? Electricity. Electricity. <coughs> Water. Water. Mm. Administrative, other things. So, do you think we can guess that based on the other park? The other parks? Yes, right? We can look at our parks. Expenses are about 60% of the revenues in the park and 75% in the resort property, slightly higher in the resort property. Okay. Uh, Disney is also going to allocate corporate administrative costs. Disney has some headquarters in the US. Okay, it's paying the salary of the CEO and so on. So we have to take some money from Disney theme park towards these general expenses. They're going to say 15% of the revenue is general expenses. Okay. Uh, general expenses is things which is going to be all over Disney, not just our theme park. Like marketing for Disney in general, that kind of thing. Uh, the next thing we have to think about is capital maintenance and depreciation. So depreciation means that the value will go down of our equipment. What kind of equipment do we have in a theme park? What kind of equipment will we have in the theme park? The attractions. Hmm? The attractions. Yes. What are, what, what are they? Do you know the name in English? I think the name in Everland is the same in English. What's the name in Korean for the attractions? Roller coaster. Roller coaster. Viking ship. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, how many years do you think they can last for? How many years can they last for before we need to change it? Uh, several years. Ten years? Yeah. Eight years? Ten years? Mm. So it depreciates every year lose its value, okay? So, uh, capital maintenance means we have to pay to fix it. We have to paint it. We have to paint the roller coaster. We have to fix the uh, something, change some things, right? Change the seats, change things. That's called capital maintenance. So, first of all, we have depreciation and capital maintenance as percentage of depreciation. So, we can see that Capital maintenance is low in the early years, but they increase as the parks age. So capital maintenance here is just 6%, but it's getting more and more as the theme park gets more older. We have to pay more for fixing things, and painting things, and doing all of that. So what we're doing here is we're uh, just... Uh, we are just getting together all of the information we need so we can figure out our cash flows. <clears throat> so, other assumptions. Disney will have to keep some non-cash working capital, uh, mainly inventory. What does inventory mean? What's another word for inventory? Inventory means goods or stock. What kind of inventory will we have at a theme park? Do you understand stock or goods? Yes. Stock has two meanings. Stock can mean juicy, but another meaning of stock is goods. What kind of stock do they have in the shop downstairs? Snacks, ice, Snacks, cream. ice cream, right? That's the inventory. They have that in the shop. It's not cash, right? So what kind of inventory do we have in the theme park? Mm, the ride might be equipment, more so. Souvenirs. Souvenirs. Food. Right, snacks, balloons. Right. So it has that kind of inventory, and also the resort property, like those kind of things. So this is going to be 5% of their revenues. Okay. Uh, 
if Disney invests any money, it's going to be taxed at the 38% rate. So uh, when we we know these things, we can start to make a table. Okay. So we can see that year zero, we're spending two billion dollars on the Magic Kingdom. Year one, another billion dollars, and so on. Okay. Then we can calculate our capital maintenance. How much do we need to pay every year to fix the machinery? Then we calculate our depreciation. Minus depreciation, this is going to be minus, right? Every year. Uh, then we can add in our working capital. That's not cash. So what we're doing here is we're finding out the things which are not, not cash. And making a table. So <coughs> this is a so-called book capital. So if we make the accounting earnings, our accounting earnings is going to look like the income statement, right? And we're going to see revenues, then we're going to have uh, expenses, okay? Then we're going to have uh, capital expenses, like depreciation. Then we're going to have operating income, EBIT. Then we're going to have taxes and income after taxes. Does this look familiar? We studied in the first week the income statement. Okay. So we make this for every year. Uh, this is revenues. We already talked about our revenues. We talked about our expenses, 60% of the revenue, revenue is 1 billion, expenses is 600 million, okay? Uh, we talked about depreciation, we calculated our depreciation every year, and so on. So we can see that according to the book value, the first year we lose this much money, in brackets means we lose the money. The next year we lose this much money, the next year we lose this much money, then we start to make money, profit, okay? So what we can notice here is that in this income statement, this big amount of money is not included at the start, right? That's included instead as depreciation every year, okay? So <coughs> we end up with this after-tax income every year, okay? So, we can see that just like any company, it's in the red, um, you can't see well here, but this is red, in the first three years, we didn't make any revenue until year two, because we were just building the factory in year one, right? Or building the theme park. Then we start to make profits in year four, and our profit starts to get bigger. Okay? So... Uh, we then can make this like this way. This is the same numbers that we had here, listed here, the year and the profit or loss. Okay, and we can then calculate our uh, return on capital for each uh, year. So, we can see that we make a return of about 4% a year. So, here we can see the value, the average is 4%. So, return on capital just means uh, we made this much more than we put in. Okay, 4% more a year on average then we invest it. So, uh, actually we don't have enough uh, time, but we'll discuss about that a little bit more in the next uh, class. So, uh, where is the attendance list? Did everybody check the attendance list? So, uh, today I'm just going to do some random checking.
of the attendance list. So just don't leave yet, I'm going to check the attendance list. Okay. So just after I call your name, uh, you can leave, okay? So, uh, Oju, Oju Jin. Here. Tway on Sunday. Uh, Kim Sung Jung. Park Chan Ho. Owe Tech. OJ Min. Omi Yu. Yu Dong Gu. Yi Min Han. Yi Yong Song. Yi Yong Song. Where is the young song? Are you a young song? Then say yes, so I can hear you. Han Moon Sok. Jang Yoon Sok. Choi Chan Yong. Ha Yong Sun Hyun. Won Dong Jun. Wang Dong Jun. Uh, Im Tae Kyun. Uh, Go So Young. Uh, Kim Do Young. Uh, Kim Bo Ran. 